Uh, good morning, it's Steve Ninnis from Maintenance Experts. Just a short video today. I want to talk about scheduling of work or the PM scheduling activator, all that sort of stuff. I've, um, I've got three th terms that I've got up here, you know, hierarchy, fixed and triggered. I'll address this as I go through it. But I, I suppose in many ways is I want to talk about, um, some of you may question as to why MEX is set up that way in relation to how PMs are created. And it's, it's pretty simple and pretty straightforward. Look, from my background, um, when, I, when I worked with you know, a fleet of equipment, what I found is in the system that I had to use at the time, is that if I had a number of, you know, a number of trucks in my operation, um, at the time I actually had to create um, the, uh, you know, if this particular truck here had a 250, a 500, uh, you know, a 750, a 1000, a 2000, a 4000 and an 8000 hour service on it, I had to create a PM in the system for all of these different items. Now that was for truck number one. And then if I had truck number two, I had to go through the system and create more PMs that were identical to the ones over here. And so um, what it ended up with is um, in maintenance, and I'm sure many of you have this, is you can end up with just thousands of PMs set up in your system that can literally, you can spend your entire life just trying to keep things straightened out. And uh, so when I had to design that part of MEX, I really wanted to think about how to make it easier. And so what I did is I actually just created a thing, at the time I called it a maintenance policy because I didn't want to call it a PM, but we now call it a PM in the system. And we made a PM and basically we said, okay, this PM is for 250 hour services. And it applies to all of my trucks. And I'll go a bit further, I'll say it's all Caterpillar. So, and I did it with some sort of, you know, qualification. So therefore, as soon as I, you know, if I added this PM into the system, it would immediately go and find all the Caterpillar trucks and actually assign that PM to them. And the only thing I needed to do then was give it a last date, uh, the last time we did the service, and it would be able to start um, scheduling the work. But the other part is as well, is if I then added another truck into my system, it, it was a very simple process because all I did was I added into truck three, and truck three would immediately grab this PM, and also to the PMs that would be associated with all of this. So therefore it just, made it so instead of having, you know, two, four, six, seven, instead of having 21 PMs in my system, I've only got seven of them. And so that's why MEX functions the way it does. Um, it's fairly simple, fairly straightforward. Now, the next thing about this was, is that, okay, if I've got a PM for this, and another one for that, and another one for the 750, and another one for the 1,000, it then comes down to, okay, um, it's, you know, how do we link any of these in together? And we do this in a very simple manner by just saying it's hierarchy. And all you have to do as the user is basically say, yep, it's hierarchy. And that means then that when the 500's due, it will actually say, yeah, we're not doing that. We're not doing the 250, we're just doing the 500. And that's how it processes. Another interesting part of the whole system is that also too how it handles the scheduling for you. Um, we're not, uh, maintenance people are not always the best at getting things done on time. So how do we actually um, handle that? So if I had this as my start point, say for this truck number one, okay, the 250 hour service was done there, and now another 250 hours down the track, and by the way, this could apply for a pump as well. I mean, you know, it's a pump, it's whatever it may be. It doesn't really matter. Um, and the 500 is due there. Now, with most systems, the, the um, sort of with the way we do maintenance is, you know, the system's gonna generate a work order to be up here for us to do the job there. 
But in many cases, we may not get the job done. So what had happened at that time, we may end up getting it done there. So the 500 was supposed to be done at this point, it gets done at this point. And this might be a week later. And it might be, it gets done at, you know, 570 hours. So even though the work order is created here to do this job, it gets done up here. What, and now on the completion of that job, what it will actually do is it'll say, hey, hold on, hierarchy is associated with this particular PM. And what it will do is it will say, okay, the 500 was done then. But then what it does as well is it drags the 250 forward. Okay, so the 250 was, sorry, the 250 assumes it was done then. So the next 250 is now pushed out to then. And by the way, just um, I'll just get rid of the 750 because I don't want to be a pain in the bum. Um, and also to the 1,000 hour, which was, you know, according to the theory, it was scheduled to be done here, has now been pushed out as well. And so what you have to do in MEX, and we've tried to make this as simple as possible, is for a fleet of trucks, for a heap of pumps, you just need to add in a few PMs and the system will do all the scheduling for you. So it'll push these things backwards and forwards as required to be done based upon when the last one was done. And it just moves the schedule around to fit in with what's going on. The, the other part of it is uh, um, that it will also do, and I can't remember what I was talking about, so I'll just continue on. The, I'm sure some of you may be actually asking the question though, is that, okay, what about if something has to be done on a certain date? You know, like a boiler service at the end of the year? You know, it's like saying, on the 23rd of December, I have this, the boiler, you know, is planned to be shut down to have the service done. You don't want that thing moving backwards and forwards. So what you can do is you say something is fixed and you only make things fixed if it's got to be happened at that particular time. I mean, if you don't want the service schedule to be pushed out like this, because remember, in doing this, if the, five, if the 500 hour service is done at 570, that means that the next 250 hour service is going to be done at um, it's going to be uh, 820, okay? And if that, that gets pushed out a little bit as well, the 1,000 hour might happen at, you know, 1,140. If you don't want that to occur, make it fixed. Then the schedule will not be pushed around as this it is here. Um, the other part is too, which I, I would implore that all customers do, is that, okay, we make... We do make up these PMs and we say it's for a, a caterpillar and, you know, sorry, we say it's for a truck and it's a cat. And it also, we might say it's, you know, it's, it's also um, an agitator and it's, uh, it's made, it's, you know, and it's made by mono. Um, any sort of grouping. We could also go a step further and say the model number. You could say, look, it's a 769, whatever. Um, use the PMs to group that equipment because then you end up with less PMs in your system that you have to manage. So therefore, if you want to change something in the future, it's much simpler to do. Um, and on that note, that was just a quick talk to talk about the activator and how things are scheduled. So thanks a lot for that.